So what I did was I put two cans of Pillsbury crescent rolls, and I opened them up and I separated the triangles. And you're probably going to use about a can and a half. And then I took the wide sides of the triangles and I pointed them in. And then the filling is really one box of chopped spinach, and you're going to squeeze out all the water. And then I took four ounces of crumbled feta cheese and a small bag of shredded mozzarella. And then I used our garlic press. We have the best garlic press. If you like your garlic press, this is amazing. Why? Because you don't peel the skin of the garlic. You stick the whole clove in with the skin on. The first crack that you hear is the skin breaking. The garlic press is out. You open it up, you throw the skin in the garbage. Amazing. So I use one clove of garlic in here. And the next thing I did was a little bit of fresh pepper, and then I used some mayonnaise. So it's spinach, feta, artichoke, a little shredded mozzarella, a little fresh garlic, and a little pepper, and I mixed it all together. And then I laid it right down the center of the crescent rolls. And we have a cookbook. It's called All the Best. There are so many different fillings you can add to this. If you have kids, you can do a taco braid. You can do a Reuben braid. You can do a chicken broccoli braid, an apple Danish braid, a s'mores braid. Oh my God, amazing. So simple. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the points and you're just gonna kinda like braid it. And you can't ruin this because when crescent rolls bake, they come out gorgeous. That is the whole thing. And then all I'm gonna do, girls, is I'm gonna do a little egg white wash because everything looks better with a little egg white wash on it. And this is our silicone pastry brush. What I love about this is if you have a pastry brush at home where you shed a bristle on your chicken, get rid of that. And this one, because it's silicone, it will never shed a bristle. You can actually leave it in your frying pan. It will never melt. It will never burn. I love that it's dishwasher safe, whereas a regular pastry brush is not. And I love that this one has a little hook on the side. Because you know the spoon always falls in the marinade? Well, this little hook will keep the pastry brush on the side of the marinade. And the last thing I'm going to add to this is a little fresh grated cheese. This is the Pampered Chef's Deluxe Cheese Grater. I took a little hunk of Parmesan cheese and I dropped it in. And what I love about this cheese grater is, if you are a lefty, you know that every appliance is geared for a righty. Well, this handle swings to the other side, so it's as easy for a lefty to use mm -hmm. as it is for a righty. So that's it, and we're gonna pop it in the oven, but before I send it away, I do wanna tell you what this is. This is our large bar pan. And the Pamper Chef prides itself on its stoneware, and this is one of my favorite pieces because it kinda has the lip around the side. But before I send it in the oven, I do wanna tell you why are the Pampered Chef stoneware pieces better than the ones you see in Bed Bath & Beyond, in the home place? The reason being is those out there are strictly pizza stones. Ours are baking stones. You're going to see a large round stone in the catalog and a flat 12 by 15 rectangular. Think about all the things you used to make on a flat cookie sheet. Whenever I used to make like sugar cookies or crescent rolls on an old fashioned cookie sheet, I'd always burn the bottom of them. That will never happen on the stone. What happens with the stone is the heat is distributed evenly. You'll never find the corners well done and the inside ice cold. Everything on the stone is going to be golden on the outside, juicy on the inside. So what would you make on those, the round one and the flat one? If you have kids, chicken nuggets, mozzarella sticks, the price club hors d'oeuvres, appetizers, chicken cutlets. Don't fry them. Instead of dipping the chicken cutlets in egg and breadcrumbs, I do Italian dressing and then breadcrumbs, lay them out on the stone. They crisp up because of the dressing, but they're baked, they're not fried. And you don't have to turn anything on the stone. Remember you used to always have to stick your head in the oven and flip the french fries and burn off your eyelashes? You don't have to do that with the stone. Everything on the stone browns all the way around. So you don't have to turn the chicken cutlets. So I always say the Pampered Chef would kill me, but I always say this is my favorite stone, and I try to talk people out of the round or the flat. Here's why. Those stones, anything that's gonna drip, you're in trouble. This is my favorite stone. You can make a pizza on this. It's just a grandma's Sicilian pizza. Who cares that it's not round? On this bar stone, I make a whole chicken cut up in parts. I make pork chops on here. I make a meatloaf on here. I do salmon, chili and sea bass, tilapia, a double box of brownies, cookies, french fries. I found out a couple of years ago I really shouldn't have carbs, so instead of having rice and pasta, every night I grill vegetables. I grill asparagus on the bar pan. I cut up broccoli, cauliflower. I drizzle a little olive oil, salt and pepper, 450 degrees, you get the burnt crispy broccoli. So you're gonna do your meat, your fish, your chicken, your appetizers, your desserts, your veggies. This was such a hot seller. They have a little one for the toaster oven. Maybe you live alone or it's just you and your husband. You don't want to light the oven and use the big one. 
on the little bar pan, you could do two salmon fillets, two pork chops on there. And then you're going to see in the catalog, our biggest stone is our big rectangular baker. That's the stone you're going to use for lasagna, for brisket, for turkey breast, a roast. You're also going to see a ridge baker with bacon on it. It really comes out looking that amazing, the bacon. That stone, I do meatballs on there, a couple of chicken breasts on there. You're also going to see a small round baker with a kale dip. That's a great side dish piece. That's a great dip for, that's a great size stone for two chicken breasts. I'll do a hot spinach dip, an artichoke dip in there. You're also going to see a stoneware pie plate. Oh my God, the pies come out amazing. Golden brown on the outside, juicy on the inside. And then girls, you're going to see this stone. Let me tell you about this. This happens to be our deep covered baker. We're actually making the lava cake in here tonight, but I want to tell you about why this is called the magic pot. First, I want you to know why this has a glazed finish. This stone is exactly the same as the others, except this one has the finish because the more you use the stones, the darker they get. Mine at home are black. It's like your great grandmother's cast iron pots. The worse they look, the better they cook. But a lot of people felt that when they got very seasoned and dark, they were ugly. So if they had a holiday table, they didn't want to bring them to the table all this color. So several years ago, the Pampered Chef came out with a glaze collection. So if you like the glaze, almost all of the stones that have sides, you have a choice of original or a glaze. But let me tell you now why this is called the magic pot. When you come home from work at 6 o'clock at night and you have no freaking clue what you're going to make for dinner, or you have children and you come off the soccer field, baseball, dance, instead of going through the drive through or worse yet, you come home and eat a lean cuisine and they eat cinnamon toast crunch, it happens in everybody's house. No, this is what you're going to do. You're going to walk in the door at 6 o'clock at night, you're going to put a whole raw chicken in here, sitting on top of potatoes and carrots. You're going to season it up, no liquid, put the lid on, you're going to put it in the microwave for 30 minutes. It is the most delicious, fall off the bone, golden brown, juicy, delicious chicken that you've ever eaten in your life. I know what you're thinking, it's going to be gray, rubber, gross. I thought the same thing. I brought the chicken with me for six months. We would make it, carve it up, the women would die. They'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe this went in and it came out in two inches of fresh broth and how delicious it is. You're going to make chicken penne alla fresca in here, raw pasta, you don't boil it. Throw in your pounds of pasta, chicken broth, white wine, plum tomato, some shrimp or chicken, 16 minutes in the microwave. You're going to make barbecued ribs in here, pulled pork, Mexican chicken, the 10 minute lava cake. I'm going to send you home with a cookbook this thick of 150 recipes that you can make in 30 minutes or less. If you don't have a microwave, this absolutely goes in the oven. Put a roast in here. Go out for three hours, go to the ball field for three hours. When you come home, it turns your oven into a clay baker. So everything self-marinates, beef, pork, chicken, a delicious, delicious meal, so quick, so easy. So this stone is $88. It was on stop sale a while back for a long time. They couldn't keep up with production because everyone wants to cook for their family, but most people don't have time. So the fact that they're 30-minute meals gets rid of the time issue. And a lot of people don't know how to cook, but the recipes that I send you are so easy. Even if you can't cook, you can make these. It's back on the market again, but I'm going to talk you out of buying it. You ready? Here's why. Okay. So everybody loved the Magic Pot. It was my number one seller until September 1st, and it was the Pampered Chef's number one seller. On September 1st, everything changed. So everyone would love this, and everyone would say, can I put that on the stove? Like my mom likes to brown her brisket before she bakes it in the oven. You want to make chili on the stove top? You cannot. These are clay. They're fired in the kiln. They cannot go on direct heat. The stones only go in the oven or the microwave. So after years of listening to women ask if it could go on direct heat or in the broiler, they finally came out with the first piece of cookware in our country. This is the first vessel in the United States that goes on every heat sauce. This is our brand new rock crock. This is the large Dutch oven. That's what I'm making the zucchini linguine in. But every single recipe that you make in the Magic Pot, you can make in the rock rock and so much more because this goes on your stove, in your oven, in your broiler, in your microwave, out on your barbecue, and then back in your dishwasher. The other night I made mussels and steamers on the barbecue, brought it in, threw it in the dishwasher. You're going to make your whole chicken in there, your bruschetta pasta, your barbecued ribs, your pork loin, your lava cake, and so much more. So the zucchini linguine, let me tell you what this is. There's no oil in here. 
There's no butter. It's a healthier way of cooking. I took our Julian peeler and a zucchini. I washed them up and I used four zucchini. You're going to take this Julian peeler and when you julian it, it looks like strands of pasta, but it's zucchini linguine. And you're going to julian it just till you get down to the seeds and then you're going to kind of toss it like you would with a cucumber when you got to the seeds. And then all I did was use half a jar of Rayo's marinara. If you don't make your own jar, if you don't make your own homemade sauce, the only jar sauce that I would use is Rayo's. You can always get it on sale in the bigger supermarkets. Delicious. And I'm going to stick this in the microwave for five minutes. You're going to cry when you taste this. But let me show you what I'm going to add to this. You know how I showed you the garlic press? Everybody loved the garlic press, but there were a lot of people that said, I don't like my garlic press. A lot of people stand there with a little sharp knife slicing their garlic. We came out with the greatest little gadget. This is the garlic peeler and slicer. What you do with this is you put your fresh garlic in here and you roll it on your kitchen counter and from the friction of your hand, the skin falls off the garlic and you drop your clean pieces right in the slicer. Look how amazing this is. Oh my God, you all have to buy this. Paper thin. So you're not gonna stand there with a little sharp knife anymore. So the nice thing about the Pampered Chef is you always have an option. You have the garlic press if you like it pressed. You have the garlic slicer if you like it sliced. And here's the thing. If you buy your garlic clean already, you don't need the peeler. If you buy it fresh, we sell it as a set. And that's it, girls. I'm going to put the lid on, and I'm going to throw it in the microwave, and I'm going to have it at the same time that the braid comes out. But I do want to tell you, this is the large rock crop. We also have a smaller everyday one in the catalog that you'll see. For a couple of dollars more, I always say you're better off with the larger one because the whole chicken sitting on top of potatoes and carrots will not fit in the everyday. And if you have a family, as most people do today, you're going to want the larger one. This is actually being nicknamed the One Pot Wonder. That's the magic pot. This is the One Pot Wonder. On Mondays, you're going to make a whole chicken. On Tuesdays, you're going to make bruschetta pasta. Wednesdays, you're going to make a pork loin. Thursdays, you're going to make the zucchini linguine. Grill up some shrimp or grilled chicken and throw that on top. So girls, are there any questions on the differences in the stoneware or the rock crop? Uh, question. Cleaning between the two. Very good question. How do you clean the stoneware? The stones have to be seasoned the first five times that you use them. If you have Pam at home, promise me you're going to go home and throw that out. That is all chemicals. We sell something so much healthier. This is the kitchen spritz up. You're going to fill to the fill line, whatever oil you like, olive oil, vegetable oil, put the lid on. You're going to pump this a few times, and all you're going to do is spray your stone the first five times. After that, no oil, no grease, no butter. They become a healthier way of cooking. So you've seasoned it the first five times. How do you clean it? Every stone comes with a little brown scraper. That and hot water is all you use to clean it. No soap, no Brillo, no dishwasher, you don't have to. You're going to see when this appetizer comes out, it slides right off the stone. The pizza lifts right off. If there's anything on it, a flick of the scraper or the abrasive side of the sponge, and you're done. No more soaking, no more tackling. Remember the corny whiz and the Pyrexes? You always had to soak those and tackle them the next day. And the reason you did was because everything's stuck in those because it burned. Nothing ever burns on the stone because nothing ever sticks. Hi! Okay. And just so you know, the rock rock, you don't have to do anything to. You cook on it and then you dump it right in the dishwasher. Any other questions? If you only use the oven or the microwave, I'm going to let you buy the magic pot. If you ever use your stovetop, your broiler, you want to use your bar,